Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is corrupting Canada's legal system for the benefit of international criminals and for himself. It's way past time for him to resign. And he needs to be investigated by the RCMP. But I need your help to put the pressure on. Montreal-based company SNC-Lavalin is one of the world's largest engineering and construction companies, but it's also one of the world's most corrupt companies. I want to give you the Coles Notes version of what's happening. It's so much. There's so much to this story. Now, SNC does work all over the world, but here in Canada, the company faces fraud and corruption charges in relation to nearly 50, that's five zero million dollars in bribes, it is alleged to have paid to Libyan officials in the 10 years between 2001 and 2011 when dictator Muammar Gaddafi was still alive and in power. The company is in trouble for paying off a brutal dictator to help their business interests. And in turn, that brutal dictator then used those millions to oppress and harm his own people. SNC was so cozy with the Gaddafi family that in 2014, during one of the several times SNC invited Gaddafi's kid to come live in Canada at their expense, the company was funding all the debauchery of old Momar's progeny. Evidence in the civil court suit between an SNC executive and the company, evidence that was eventually handed over to the RCMP, revealed that SNC was using their petty cash to pay for hookers and strippers and porn for Saudi Gaddafi when he lived in Montreal and Toronto for four months back in 2014. So SNC is in a lot of hot water with the Canadian legal system, but they also have a lot of friends in the Liberal Party of Canada. They donate a lot of money to the Liberal Party of Canada, sometimes even illegally. One Liberal MP, Alexander Mendez, is admittedly married to someone who works for SNC. And the company's Montreal-based, just like Justin Trudeau. It may as well be the SNC Liberal Party of Canada since the two are so closely intertwined. So when SNC got in trouble for all those Libyan bribes, SNC began a full court press on their friends, lobbying the Liberals hard at least 19 times since 2017 to enter into a remediation agreement with them, something you might hear now called the Deferred Prosecution Agreement, or a DPA. Instead of going to trial... For all the crimes they committed in Libya, the company says that they've now changed their ways and they expect a clean slate for themselves under Canadian law. We just have to trust them. The deal the company was asking for and the deal powerful liberals wanted for them was a fine and an apology. And that's pretty much it. And probably the most important part of the deal would allow SNC to continue to be eligible for lucrative government contracts despite bribing the Libyans. Those would be government contracts handed out by their friends in the Liberal Party. Our Justice Minister at the time, though, Jody Wilson-Raybould, was having none of it. Even though she's a Liberal, she wasn't willing to meddle in the Canadian justice system to give Liberal Party friends favorable treatment. And her party turned on her for it. But unlike other bullied silent Liberals, Wilson Raybould spoke up and told the truth at the Justice Committee meeting this week. Jody Wilson Raybould testified that Justin Trudeau and his staff, including his principal secretary and best friend Gerald Butts, as well as Katie Telford, Trudeau's chief of staff, spent months and months trying to convince her to defer prosecution of SNC telling her that doing the right thing by Canadians and prosecuting this company for their crimes would harm too many Canadian jobs and jeopardize the Liberals' chances of hanging on to a few seats in Quebec. It sounds like the only Canadian jobs the Liberals were all that worried about were their own. Now just listen to what Jody Wilson-Raybould testified to in front of that Justice Committee here. For a period of approximately four months between September and December of 2018, I experienced a consistent and sustained effort by many people within the government to seek to politically interfere in the exercise of prosecutorial discretion in my role as the Attorney General of Canada in an inappropriate effort to secure a deferred prosecution agreement with SNC-Lavalin. These events involved 11 people, excluding myself and my political staff, from the Prime Minister's office, the Privy Council office, and the office of the Minister of Finance. 
There were express statements regarding the necessity of interference in the SNC Lavalin matter, the potential of consequences, and veiled threats if a DPA was not made available to SNC. The Prime Minister asked me to help out, to find a solution here for SNC, citing that if there is no DPA, there would be many jobs lost and that SNC would move from Montreal. The Prime Minister again cited the potential loss of jobs and SNC moving. Then, to my surprise, the clerk stated, or started to make the case, for the need for a DPA. He said, quote, there is a board meeting on Thursday, September the 20th, with stockholders, end quote. Quote again, they will likely be moving to London if this happens, and there is an election in Quebec soon, end quote. At that point, the Prime Minister jumped in, stressing that there is an election in Quebec, and that, quote, I am an MP in Quebec, the member for Papineau, end quote. What Wilson Raybould described there is obstruction of justice. She said Trudeau was asking her to cut a sweetheart deal with a company that has hired prostitutes for Muammar Gaddafi's son so that Trudeau could protect liberal seats in Quebec. It's political meddling in the law in the truest sense of the phrase. Here's the law. See for yourself. Everyone who willfully attempts in any manner to obstruct, pervert, or defeat the course of justice in a judicial proceeding by indemnifying or agreeing to indemnify a surety in any way, either in whole or in part, or whether he is a surety by accepting or agreeing to accept a fee or any form of indemnity, whether in whole or in part, from or in respect of a person who is released or is to be re released from custody. And everyone who willfully attempts in any manner other than a manner described in subsection 1 to obstruct, pervert, or defeat the course of justice is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 10 years. You know, that's a lot of legal jargon there, but basically it means if you meddle in the independence of a criminal prosecution, you can go to jail for up to two years. Sounds like some people need to go straight from the PMO off to the penitentiary. And Trudeau made good on those veiled threats Wilson Raybould was talking about, didn't he? After she refused to bend the Canadian legal system in favor of a powerful, corrupt Montreal-based company like her boss asked her to do, Wilson Raybould was shuffled out of her role as Canada's first Aboriginal female Attorney General over to Veterans Affairs. And as for Trudeau, He's falling back on his old reliable excuse when it comes to women accusing him of impropriety. He doesn't have the guts to come out and call Jody Wilson-Raybould a liar to her face, despite the fact that she has text message evidence to back up her claims. Trudeau is just simply saying now that perhaps she remembers it all wrong, saying, I have taken knowledge of her testimony and there are still reflections to have on the next steps, whatever that means. So this meticulous note-taking lawyer, Jody Wilson-Raybould, is experiencing the pressure campaign from the PMO differently. The same way, I guess, reporter Rose Knight experienced it differently when Trudeau groped her at a music festival in Creston, British Columbia some two decades ago. Trudeau's loyalist ministers are now lining up to protect him. Krista Freeland popped up to say that she thanks Jody Wilson-Raybould for saying her truth, which is just a very sleazy way of saying Wilson-Raybould is not telling the actual truth, but just a version of it. And that aforementioned spouse to SNC employee, that liberal MP Alexandra Mendez, while well, she calls the whole thing a fiction, created by opposition parties, completely forgetting that Jody Wilson-Raybould is in her party. Now, here's where I need your help. I don't want to live in a country where the amount of money you donate to the party in power is directly correlated to your treatment in the legal system. And I don't think you do either. Justice is supposed to be blind and evenly applied for all of us, rich or poor, politically connected or otherwise. Our government and our justice system shouldn't be for sale to the highest bidder. You know what? That's how they do things in Libya as SNC just proved to all of us. 
But that's not how we roll here in Canada. And worst of all, those corrupting the legal system are those now charged with protecting it. The new Justice Minister, David Lametti, said he doesn't really see a problem here. In fact, he's already discussed SNC with the Prime Minister's office, and he did this after he was sworn in to replace Wilson Raybould. So we can't trust Lametti to get out of the way and let justice take her course either. So I think it's time for a little sustained pressure campaign of our own, don't you think? Trudeau has got to go. It's high time for him to resign, and it's also time for any good Liberal MPs, if there are any left, to stand up to him. Because it's really not a left or right issue to stand up for the even-handed application of the law. I think Liberal MP Jody Wilson-Raybould just proved that to all of us this week. So here's what I want to do, and I really need your help, because I want this to be huge, because I think this is one of the most pressing issues facing our, our democracy today. It's not for sale. Trudeau said he's going to leave this whole SNC mess in the hands of the Ethics Commissioner. But that's not enough. This is criminal, not just ethical. And it demands a criminal investigation. So I have a petition to the RCMP. You can find it at jailtrudeau.com. I'm calling on the RCMP to investigate the troubling allegations of obstruction of justice made by former Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould against Justin Trudeau. It's so important that the RCMP investigate this alleged crime with the same ferocity that they would investigate any crime committed by any Canadian. It's important for our confidence in the National Police Force and our legal system. Now, this next thing I need your help with, this is the fun stuff. I want to get a video billboard truck to tell everyone how Trudeau may have obstructed justice. I want to raise enough money to drive our big, beautiful billboard truck around Montreal and around Ottawa, right where Trudeau feels the safest. Now, we've done this sort of thing before, and it is a fun and effective way to fight back and get the truth out to a lot of people. But to do that, I probably need between four and $5,000. The truck can cost anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 a day. And then to work on the video artwork, that's probably another $500 to 1000 bucks, conservatively speaking. It is costly, I know. But I think telling Justin Trudeau that they don't allow fancy socks in prison is priceless. Now, you can pitch in to help cover the cost of the billboard truck at jailtrudeau.com. Now, whether you are a wealthy, trust fund, foppish-haired goofball of a politician, or one of the world's largest engineering firms, if you break Canadian law, you must face Canadian justice. Donate today and sign my petition at jailtrudeau.com. For the rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunry. It's time for a criminal investigation into whether or not Justin Trudeau and the rest of his cohorts in the Prime Minister's office obstructed the investigation and prosecution of Liberal-linked company SNC-Lavalin. To sign my petition and to help fund my video billboard, go to jailtrudeau.com.